Hi, so a while ago I started a project called um, how to remake an, a lead acid battery when it's completely wrecked. Now that video is available but it's a members video so if you don't feel like being a member the information is on the net you can search it out really easily. All we actually do is cut the top off of this and cook it in a kiln for a while. Those times and temperatures well you'll have to search them out but they are available to you and that is basically what you do. Now when we take the top off of this obviously pour out the acid, what we get inside is a whole load of these things sat in a whole load of these things. These are your lead plates and these are the um, protection sleeves that they come in. And it's those that you want. We cook those down actually, and we cook those down into two materials at two temperatures, and that is this stuff, which is yellow lead, and this stuff, which is red lead. And we can make both of these out of this at different temperatures that we cook them at. Now we're talking about lead and lead acid batteries. So of course this is going to be a prime target for the health and safety police. If you're worried about that, I've done a video called The Dangers of Lead. Have a look at that and post all your worries on there. So once we get this stuff out, it's a powder. This stuff obviously isn't a powder, it's a liquid. And it's only a liquid because I ground the powders up in this thing in water. So I gave them a spin in this kitchen grinder. Hour each, litre of water, the powders you've got, and what you'll get out is these two containers. The reason I do that is because I want to have a fine paste and it turns the paste into a powder, uh, the powder into a paste, and I can stop worrying about it. This is the stuff that I'm going to be working with on remaking the lead acid battery. So I'll be going through this again with people on when I do that, that, that video, and that video is up and coming in the next few days. But this particular one is the real one we want. Now, if you have a look at the video on making the copper oxide solar cell, the thing about yellow lead is it is a photoactive N-type semiconductor. When I found that out, I thought, wow, that's really awesome because there is a prime candidate for making a solar cell. You could make a solar cell out of this stuff, I thought to myself, so I'm going to give it a go, and that's exactly what I did. Now, making solar cells, actually, is stunningly easy, once you get that paste. When we get that paste, we want to hold a glue in it to have it hold everything together. The really good glue, here it is, is this, and this is 40% solution of water glass. So you get some sodium silicate, 40 grams of it, put it into 60 millilitres of water and dissolve it like that, so it's 40% by weight, um, sodium silicate in water, or water glass. That stuff is a glue. That will glue metal oxides to glass and to metals like you wouldn't believe. So you mix it up with that until it's a paste, and here in fact is the paste. So this, it's just a creamy paste actually kind of nice. I'll give you a close-up of it in a second. So we mix it up into a creamy paste and all we then have to do is paste that onto a bit of copper mesh and let it dry. So here is my copper mesh. I've just cut a bit. Here's my yellow lead made into a paste with um, sodium silicate and all I did was paint it onto the copper and there is my solar cell. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Okay, let's go and see what this does. So there's our little lead cell sitting in the sun and we've had to do nothing with that apart from painting on the copper. There's no electrolyte in there and there's um, no cooking it at high temperatures. You just paint the lead dioxide, the yellow lead, sorry, straight onto that cell, giving us 0.22 of a volt. So about the same as the copper. So there you go, you take the insides of some batteries you cook them in the oven for a bit to turn them into yellow lead, make a paint out of it, paint it onto some copper mesh, and you'll make yourself a solar cell that performs better than a copper oxide solar cell. Anyway, I thought I would share that with you. Um, these are actually really quite interesting. They're called uh, metal oxide solar cells, and they're the hot topic in research just right now. What we did here, where we just used that metal oxide on one current collector and another current collector, is by a long shot not the best way of doing this. If you have a look at the research, you'll find that multi-layer devices work much, much better. Now, it's very interesting that this is an N-type material. 
is if we take an n-type material and a p-type material and join those on a hot surface, take the current out of the other side, one on the n, one on the p, at a cold surface, then we get a uh, Peltier device. So this could well lead to a homemade Peltier device as well, which I think is really exciting. So not only is it the initial bit of your own homemade solar cell, it also could be so much else, not only remaking the battery, but making your own Peltier devices too, so I'm quite excited by this. But to go back to the solar cells, have a look at the research, have a look at the multi-layered structures, see what else they're putting in. Remember we talked about layers of N and P types with interfacial layers. All of those things could be really exciting to investigate, but if you just want to make a simple solar cell as a demonstration, there's how to do it. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.